and welcome back now we've got another exciting week when more pcbs have arrived from my wonderful friends pcb way and that's the little tiny board that you see on there now before you get too excited that ralph's really moved up in the world regarding pcb design i have to say straight away that this is a design that i've modified a little bit out of a book all right which i'm working my way through so without further ado let's open up the box and uh, take everything out that's in there Right, so this is what it's like inside. You get your 10 pieces, in my case, and I've ordered 10 pieces of these boards, which I'll explain all about as time goes on. Tiny little things, aren't they? And look, yeah, you're right. SMD components. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? And, wow, I got one of these for free, look. This is a PCB way, um, well, PCB assistant, really. And it shows you all the sort of different trace widths, SMD sizes, um, outlines drill hole sizes and the other side it shows chip sizes grid patterns oh and this is great actually i wanted something like this and i found something like this on one of the asian websites but um quite honestly it was a little bit too expensive for me to buy and now they've included one just out of the blue they didn't tell me they were going to do it so i guess it's luck of the draw whether you get one or not and uh, yeah that's great right okay so you get that as well and uh, a few stickers. Great, let's put this away and spread things out on my desk a little bit more. Right, here are all the 10 boards then scattered on my desk, plus that lovely little ruler up there. And as you can see, they are very small indeed. Um, now, the thing about this board is that it's going to be a surface mount device, as you can see, well, mainly surface mount. Okay, if you can um, see all the pads on there, this is where I'm gonna have to solder on an AT Mega 328P, the same one as uh, used in the Arduino Uno, plus a couple of, of EEPROM chips, and here a clock chip, right? So it will have an onboard clock, similar to the DS3231 or DS, um, can't remember the name now, um, with a crystal, which is what that little hole there is going to be for. And then, of course, the main crystal for this is going to sit in here. Right, okay, what, what's this all about? Well, basically, I said I was going to learn KiCad properly so that, you know, no mucking about. So I thought, right, what do I need to do to learn KiCad and produce something like this? Well, let's have a look at what I did. So I looked around on the internet to see what sort of learning resources there were out there to enable me to learn KiCad. And there are lots of them, online ones, that is, anyway. Um, DigiKey do a lot, and I've mentioned those in a in past video. But I thought, do you know, I'm just not that happy learning stuff from the screen all the time. I want to be able to sit down and read through a few things, make notes and whatnot, you know. And um, this book is offered by Elector, as you can see. Now, as it happens, I do have a subscription to Elector, but that's as far as it goes. I don't, this isn't an affiliate link or anything like that. Um, Dr. Peter Del Morris has written this, KeyCAD Like a Pro. And believe me, it's one of the best books, technical books, I've read in a long, long while. Well, and um, it goes from the absolute basics right the way through to that very board as created for me by PCB Way. And this, this is the sort of thing that you can end up with. Now, admittedly, I've taken his circuit diagram, modified it a little tiny bit, taken his PCB, modified that a little bit as well, so that I can get something that i can hopefully put together in the future so if you're interested in spending a little bit of money because i'm not saying this is cheap by any means it's about in the region of between 30 and 35 euros yeah i know i also thought that initially i thought oh that's a lot of money but i got so desperate at the end of it i thought i need something that is really going to help me get to grips with this rather than just dipping in here dipping in there and, and just not quite grasping the whole thing so i looked at uh, reviews of this and they were very positive indeed and well when i eventually get around to reviewing this it'll be very positive for me as well because it really is top-notch book i'll put a link uh, down below where you can find it um, probably in amazon or somewhere like that yeah um and the it does go through every single possible step that you'd ever want to know about creating PCBs and schematics and outlines and footprints and you name it, it does it. There he is, Dr. Peter Dalmaris. Now, after you've done a few exercises in that book and you've sort of got to grips with, you know, creating schematics and all that, to get to this, he what he does is three projects. This one, 
uh, a raspberry pi hat and something else i can't remember off the top of my head it doesn't matter uh, as soon as i saw this one i thought yeah i've really got to know how to do this so what this is basically is an 18 mega 328p exactly as you'd find in an arduino uno in the center but surface mount um, extended eprom here i think it's 512k eprom a clock module here with a little crystal that crystal there controls this um, a few components and headers and roughly that's it now the bit i've changed because when i first uh, got some smd components out i thought i am never going to be able to solder them in here obviously these are now through hole but they weren't originally they were smd so i've changed these to through hole knowing that i can do that the other thing i changed was this thing up here what he had on his board was um, a three pin header or two pin header for power basically only power you can't uh, upload a program you have to use icsp for that uh, so what i've got here is an outline that i had to create myself for a usb socket right there we are there's a close-up not just of my thumbnail but also of this micro usb socket exactly as you'd find really um, on your phone or any piece of equipment that uses one of those micro connectors now why did i choose this particular particular connector well i found these funnily enough of all places on amazon there were plenty available on the far eastern websites as well the you know markets and whatnot but uh, what i needed of course was the measurements and amazon had the footprint measurements on their website so i thought well i can start designing this straight away so let me show you the tiny little socket that eventually this is going to plug into right so here's a whole strip of those USB sockets. Let me get one out and uh, we'll see how well it fits. So into that socket, top left hand corner, the outline, this is the little tiny socket that's supposed to fit in there. Now, as you can see, it's sorry about my fingers being so huge, but as you can see, the outline is particularly small and on the back of these little tiny connectors, there's, you can just make them out there, little tiny lugs little black plastic lugs there and there that sort of give it a bit of mechanical um, well security on that board so if we try to fit one on and remember I had to take all these measurements off the Amazon website and I'm gonna to have to zoom back out again so you can see what's going on here a little bit that's it in position with the with the lugs and everything and the little fingers just happen to to meet up exactly as specified look of course soldering those is going to be a bit of a challenge frankly but there we are and of course you do solder these things on the side as well to give it a bit more mechanical security on that board but that basically fits perfectly so i'm really glad that that all worked really so using the keycad footprint designer and all the holes and everything was quite a learning thing but i followed peter uh, Dal Morris's book how to do all that and it, it just worked it was it was great so what about all these other components then that are SMD well I've ordered these from a, a different company this time they're from uh, Farnell element 14 so let's have a look at some of those how small they are right so this is one pack and I haven't opened any of these yet because they're so tiny and so small I just know they're going to get lost so this is the uh, the crystal for the clock somewhere in there it's a cylinder we've seen them before and what's this one here this one is the clock crystal okay so it's the it's the ds 1337s and uh, they're in those two tiny little holes there so i'm not going to get those out these are the eprom 512k each i believe or 256k where's the number there it is it's a 24 lc 1025 and they're in those little tiny things there i'm not i'm not getting those out either because they'll be dropped on the floor i just know it all right so this, this is a surface mount red led because one thing i did have to capitulate on in my desire not to have too much surface mount was the led which goes here i thought well i've got dozens and dozens and dozens of red leds so why am i using a surface mount and just making it difficult for me but when i tried to make these through hole i could not for the life of me get all the 
traces to be correct. Remember, it's a double-sided board. Um, although this is now copper poured ground, trying to get those with through hole, it just is impossible. Now, what um, Peter Dalmaris does in that book is reduce this this board in both two layer, which is what this is, and four layer to prove the point that you can do it. But he says, why go to the four layer trouble when a two layer will do? And of course, this is a two layer and it works very well with surface mount. If you go with through hole though, it's a little bit more tricky. So I've left that red LED there as a surface mount. I think that will be okay. Uh, he said, yes, with full confidence, of course, in his ability, never having sold really more than, uh, I don't know, what did I sold her? A voltage regulator that was surface mount once. Hmm. Okay, so that's that's the board then from PCB Way. I ordered it just the normal way as I would have done, um, put into the design. They said, yes, it's okay, it's passed. They then authorised it, so I didn't have to pay for it, of course, and it arrived via DHL about three days later. So what's today, Tuesday? Yep, Tuesday. This was probably about Friday, I think, when I did this. And there's been a the bank holiday in between as well in the UK. Now, service mount devices then. How do we go about soldering those? So there are a few ways to solder surface mount devices, of course. Some people are lucky enough to have the eyesight to be able to do it just like that. I'm not one of those, as you know from my experience of detached retina. So um, I've invested, first of all, in this, which I'm just about to put on. This is um, what watchmakers and people use. As you can see, it's sort of got a big magnifying glass at the front. And that means you can see things really close. Um, let me see if I can give you an example of what this lens does when you're looking through it by putting it on the front of this camera. Right, so there it is now in front of the camera, and here's the board. Let me see if I can get that into focus. There we are. Now, if I take the lens away again, look how much smaller it is. I mean, it makes quite a bit of difference. Certainly, um, for my eyes, when I've got to go really close, that's the thing, isn't it? You've got to go really close it makes one huge difference. Now these these um, watchmakers glasses, let's call them that, come with five different lenses. Here's a whole pack of them and you can get different strengths. So this is quite strong, it's the one from the end. The weakest one is this end. Uh, and the whole caboodle costs something in the region of 15 pounds maybe. I'll put a link at the bottom of this video. But as I say, these are from Amazon, all right? Now, some people just use a magnifying glass okay so something like something like this which sort of works i guess this little round hole is extreme magnification so if we take this here and look at it you can see that yes it does magnify very well but whether it's good enough to actually solder with and how you're going to hold this that's the thing isn't it now i'm hoping that my friends in one of the chinese warehouses is going to send me something to help with surface mount technology and when it comes in you'll be the first to see it of course but in the meantime i'm not going to try and solder any of this because i just know it's going to be a disaster so what i've actually bought is a test kit from banggood it's basically an old kit that does nothing anymore some of the components are missing most of the components are missing but the board and some of the components like resistors and capacitors they've given me uh, with that kit, I say given, I had to buy it. Um, so let's have a look at that. Okay, here it is. So this is um, a bag of an item. I can give you the list of this as well. And you can see where it's got lots of room for resistors and bits and pieces. And they give you all these things in here in these strips. Now they are so extremely tiny. I did in fact take out at one point um, an LED a red LED out of one of these and the thing disappeared across my desk never to be seen again so I thought hmm this could be trickier than I thought so before I get on to start soldering chips like that and that one and that one um, I'm going to try some of the bigger components like resistors and capacitors and see how well I get on with those I have got some solder paste so what I might try doing on this particular board is just putting a little tiny bit of solder paste onto some of these pads um, say some of these resistors, a bit of solder paste on that, splodge the resistor down, heat it up either with a soldering iron or with my trusty Dremel hot air gun, although that is rather too hot really for service man stuff. But I'm going to practice on here first before I go anywhere near this. 
Now, it's a pity in some ways that I didn't take more note of um, PCBWay's website because what they said was, we're doing a special offer at the moment. This surface mount technology stuff or assembly of your PCB overall, they're doing now um, at a special offer. Let's have a look at that. So the offer they're running from the 1st of May to the end of August, August the 31st, is that their assembly fee drops down from $88 for 10 boards down to $30 for SMT prototypes, right? Uh, as long as it's 20 pieces and no more than 600 parts, which sounds like an awful lot, that's 600 parts. But anyway, um, so 20 PCBs, 600 components on those boards, and it's $30, as it says right here in their website. Fifth anniversary, sale for SMT order, a special order. Okay, so you can look at that. Now, if I'd seen that and talked to my contact over in PCB Way, I think I would have probably got them to make this for me because I'm just not convinced my skills are up to soldering something that small, unless, of course, I discover through that Banggood test kit that, in fact, it's easier than I thought. The other technique that I've heard of is that you just put so put the chip on here tack it on one corner and then the other to make sure it's square solder it all over so it's all joined up and then get some desoldering braid suck it all back up again but there's enough left on there underneath the connections to make a good contact but as i say it's all a bit hit and miss i'm a newcomer to smt soldering so interesting stuff yes okay let's have a look at the um the diagram for this and the PCB itself, all from KiCad. So here we have the design. So over here we can see that um, what we've actually got in this bit here, this is the actual processor. All due respect to Dr. Dalmaris, I think I would have drawn this a little bit differently. We're not used to seeing 80 mega 328Ps drawn like this, unless of course it's a dual in line one, but then you'd have pins down both sides. I think I'd have drawn this a bit squarer to make it look a bit more like the physical object. I know schematics are, well, by their very name, schematic and shouldn't really be constrained by their physical outline, but I think it just sometimes helps, doesn't it? Especially given that most of these items here, look, are not connected, obviously, because you want to connect them to something else, don't you? Now, the bit I changed was this bit here. This was, in fact, a three volt battery. So what I've done, if I can just zoom in on that, I've changed this to a USB micro socket. This symbol, I believe, was already available. I might have tweaked it a little bit. But basically, this is just for power now. As you can see, the data and the, um, what's this one? The ID, the to go feature is not connected. We're not using any of those. You can't program the board using the micro socket. But I thought as a power source, surely a a phone adapter is going to be better than just a, a three volt battery given that the chip can take five volts so um yeah that's one of the changes i did anything else on that let's have a look no everything else i left alone okay so now if we look at the pcb board as well see how that looks like right so the board with the measurements on it now it's slightly bigger than dr delmaris's board because I've extended it a little bit. Uh, one for the USB socket. So the USB socket over here, obviously I have to make a little bit of room for it. Um, the surface mount components. And also I wanted a bit more room over here and at the top so I could actually put some writing on it. In fact, if we kill some of these layers so we can see the silk screen, and there's um, a view of what the silk screen, the writing on the board, actually looks like. The top layer all by itself. Makes it a lot easier to look at, doesn't it? So there we are. As you can see, it's pretty small, isn't it? 43 millimetres by 26. Well, nearly, yeah, 26. Yeah, um, it's, it's pretty small. And, uh, well, I think that is shown very much in the finished product. Very small indeed. Now, what I'm going to do then, as I say, is, um, well, I'm waiting on that piece of equipment from China that will help me with surface mounting technology, soldering it. But in the meantime, I'm going to use that kit from Banggood to practice my skills. So that'll be the first thing to do. And I'll report back on that. And if I think I'm good enough to solder this, 
without any extra equipment apart from my my glasses here these watchmakers glasses then I might have a go but I've got to be sure that I'm not going to just ruin the board for no reason so there we are it's all it's all quite exciting stuff at the moment and um, yeah I'm I'm quite keen to get going on that so bear with me and do look at the links below for both the book the glasses and the soldering experimental kit or practice kit it's very cheap it's about two or three dollars i think it is and as i say the kit doesn't actually do anything even when you've soldered it all together this will never do anything obviously it did at one stage um well we hope it did at one stage maybe it was so rubbish that they decided not to sell it anymore i don't know but this doesn't do anything but it is purely just to help you solder stuff right i'm going to leave it there all the links and stuff are down below and um, you can follow me on my journey of, of building this up this rather nice PCB way PCB and uh, see how it goes. It's a quick video this one. I'm off to Germany in a couple of days to see my mum, install some equipment over there. But when I come back, we'll continue with this saga. Great, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.